the reason I'm going to read these these two particular poems is uh, they're they're dedicated to my father, uh, and uh, those of you who follow poetry may may have heard that uh, the the great uh, Irish poet Seamus Haney died yesterday, uh, and he was a very influential writer on my work uh, and the the kind of approach that he took with his work, uh, being very earthy and speaking to people in ordinary accessible ways has had a great influence on, on my work. So I'd just like to read a couple of poems from uh, My Planet that were dedicated to my adopted father. This one's called Daddy. One. Couldn't last. Grew so fast you left your heart at the starting line until you were puffed. No fiber optics to retool your cardiac, so you grinned and lit your first cigarette a boy will mimic what a man's got to do, but no one made fun of your shadow for long. Two, another war, everyone in four color except you. And it wasn't fair, there were Jews dying in Poland, it just wasn't fair. You cruised down to surplus and scored past war. At twilight, you marched to the eternal flame with spit polished pride. Singing flags, keeping in code with the ghetto. Teaching the Japs and Krauts what stragglers can do with the soft anger of imagined guns. The sparrows were impressed, and the women. You were last on the cliff, but they'd still have danced you, Jew or not, on their detours for munitions. They wanted your danger on their tongue, scalding their pleats with a musk of starlets. Was it a miracle you didn't father your own army back then, or just an omen? You really believed they had to be Jewish to fall pregnant. Three, by the time you thought of school again, they were blinded with confetti. Anyway, you didn't see the point. The smart had miscalculated the power of eight, had collected lampshades of Jew skin, had fluked onto the mushroom cloud. You'd get on with what really mattered, making money. America was on the move, so you bought a truck and got your dreams filthy. Work came fast and furious, and you never felt so good except, where were all the women? Now, gone to officers, everyone, pledging their love to repopulate. But they wanted stories of enemy fire and wounds before they'd come across, and you couldn't lie even for sex, and you thought the fist in your chest was them, so you worked even harder till your heart spat the metronome. That wasn't fair either, but it was a life. And this one's called Trucking. My adopted father was a self employed truck driver. The proof under his fingernails, between the fine etchings of skin, I worshipped it and couldn't wait to get out to make his grease mine. If there were doctor's sons in our neighborhood, they kept to themselves on inside tracks to the up and up mothers of tycoons made and redeemed and shouted dimensions of a world that cowed our brick worn street. My father's work was a second hand truck, a massive red chassis he polished on weekends until even the pox said, Enough. I was his tiptoes with soft rags and steamy suds and really thought I made a dent in his chores since he thanked me like the grown-up I hurried to be. On holidays, I'd make a bunker of furniture mats and dollies in the back of his truck, our secret from her that he let me ride there. It was left to me to hold open the doors and check the ropes were on the load were taut. Very important, he said. If a fridge bounces on a swerve, well, that could be our end in the ditch. Then we'd laugh at the thought of furniture splayed like turtles on a shoulder of mud. His crew were all Negroes, but color never came into the sweat they shared, even when backs were turned. And when he died so suddenly that 4th of July, they came to the graveside and muttered prayers to their own distant God for the friend he'd been and father taken too soon, inexplicably too soon. I was too young to defend his truck, sitting idle in the yard, and I suppose I should be grateful it was quickly sold to help us get by.
Just a thing, after all, not so precious as a pet put to sleep in the night. Of course, my mother had bigger plans for me than a trucker's life, but I wanted nothing of her carefully ironed dreams. I'd wrap myself tight in a greasy mat and catch my father yet.